This summer, my colleague Monica reached across the divide between our semi-permeable University of Michigan silos, the School of Art and Design, and the Taubman College of Architecture and Urban Planning. She invited me to participate in an event about the future of design. I said, yes, of course, my new colleague. Designing began. Coincidentally, some uses of the word up surfaced. While up means up, we also wake up, speak up. It's up to someone to write up reports we call up friends, warm up leftovers, clean up kitchens, lock up houses, fix up cars, stir up trouble, work up an appetite, think up excuses, dress up, open up, stopped up drains, look up, up in the dictionary, if we're up to it, we build up a list of the ways up is used. This takes up a lot of time, but we shouldn't give up because things will clear up or get further messed up like the word design. <clears throat> the specific dates of today's event arrived and I dutifully placed them on my calendar confident that I could conjure up something when the time came. At the time of the invitation, Monica said something about having only 15 minutes to present. I continued to pack my calendar with daily obligations for the fall. Recently, this event was announced. The list of presenters was made public, realizing that I was committed in print and slated with a collection of pedigreed design heavies, folks who can recite the design Bible line and verse. Doubt set in. It occurred to me that I had little to say about the future of grand design, certainly something that would be revelatory to such an august group. I could considered, considered the possibility of calling in sick today and simply confessing to Monica that I had erred in saying yes and asking her for forgiveness. In 1974, the former Michigan University of Michigan College of Architecture and Design, which included the Department of Art and was located in Lorch Hall in the university's central campus, was moved to the north campus and divided into two separate units, the College of Architecture and Urban Planning and the School of Art. No one seems to remember if the artists were kicked out of heaven or simply fled into a strange kind of co-located purgatory. In the late 1990s, the School of Art was renamed the School of Art and Design. Today, some 35 years later, after the split, the two units remain civil to each other, mostly separate, with a few growing collaborations. Design is now in the name of the former School of Art, and design is not in the name of the Taubman College of Architecture and Urban Planning, which is sponsoring this event today such are the confusing artifacts of the academy. Personal context. Most of my formal education is in engineering. I mixed in studies in art along the way. Today, when asked about my work, I usually equivocate. Pressed, I will say that I make stuff that fits loosely into the culture of art and uses the tools, materials, and processes of engineering. Pressed harder, I will mention the words sculpture and installation. In my current day job, I preach the gospel of making problems and solving those very same problems, a transferable skill. Years ago, a college classmate and I were talking about futures as college students are wont to do. He showed me a detailed timeline of the events of his probable, of his, of his life up into, up into, up to, up to and including the date of his probable death. That was one of my least forgettable experiences, formative experience. In terms of getting from A to B in life, I've always been wary of utilizing design processes, but aware that chance seems to favor preparedness. <clears throat> Recently, I realized that today's gathering was getting dangerously close. Months had become days. The future of design had become, for me, the present of design, and I was still in denial. Soon I would be standing here doing this. So I'll go out on a limb 
and postulate that deadlines will remain a critical element in design's future. <laughs> Project Start was saying yes to Monica. Project Acceptance was saying yes to myself, which I finally did. Yet to be faced, however, was the matter of converting a problem denied into a problem solved. Next step was letting go of the problem that I thought I had been assigned, saying something sage to you today about design and its future. Actually, the problem was simply filling 15 minutes on stage. Perhaps the future of design has something to do with reworking the perceived problem. Got to get to the facts, understand the territory. We can't just generate pretty consumable stuff anymore. We must understand the history, culture, data with mathematics, competition, costs, legalities, environmental issues, personal psychodramas, and more. The time is getting shorter. I sat in my studio staring at the wall of books that had the term design in their titles or chapters, and once again had a moment of doubt. So then, in a college student moment, I googled the word design and was delighted to find that the comprehensive taxonomy of the verb and the noun had been dutifully distilled into wiki form by the new virtual keepers of the culture. Pressure was off. I could simply stand before you and read the Wikipedia entry. <laughs> Better yet, I could use text to speech and let a machine read it aloud to you. Conclusion, the future of design will rely less and less on pages and bound volumes. Once upon a time, I constructed what turned out to be a series of objects dealing with the concept of time. This was about 35 years ago. A subset of these works involved developing unistrut, steel sculptural forms using the four letters of the word time, T-I-M-E. The first piece was one time, the second two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, ten times, ten fingers. About a thousand pieces of unistrut go into ten times. It was a good time to stop. <laughs> Modularity is likely in our designing future. Nature tells us that in an uncertain environment, like the environment of creative work, systems comprised of, decon of a deconstructible hierarchy of subsystems tend to survive better, perhaps evolve. Further, stuff that is modular tends to lend itself to mass production. Now, whether or not this presentation and one-minute modules will be mass-produced or, relatedly, go viral on YouTube is a matter for speculation. <clears throat> Much of the stuff that individuals human, individual humans make is in the form of one-offs or few-offs. One garden, one or a few children, one stamp collection, one college education. <laughs> What's the future of one-offs? In my early stuff-making days, I made an object that I thought said everything and nothing, a constant temperature umbrella. It seemed to be purposeful, like a bread warmer. It utilized the simplest of scientific research methods, keeping one or more variables constant, in this case temperature, it was made entirely of found materials. And while not very complex, it was more complicated technically than most stuff one will find in an art gallery. To this day, I remain fond of this object, and yet its arrival still baffles me. No one, including me, was asking for this particular device. It looks like it was designed. It never occurred to me to make another one yet everyone should have an umbrella warmer. Ever wonder about the relationship of the capacity of the human brain to manage the ever more complex entities which it designs? 
Things like derivatives comprised of subprime mortgages, like nuclear reactors, like governments, like cell phone privacy, like religions. Obviously, we can design stuff the impact of which we don't understand well enough to manage. That's a main trick for nature to play, but whoever said nature plays fair? Perhaps we should think about designing some new and improved designers who only design stuff that can be managed without destroying the designers and the rest of us. Perhaps we should, perhaps we should not be designing anything at all in the future. Relatedly, how far ahead should designers try to look to the next stockholders report, to our next promotion review, to the weekend, to the time when funding runs out. Not so long ago, there was a time when a certain group of scientists were called naturalists. They explored and reported on nature, typically earthbound. They sometimes drew a line between the human free earth and the earth as a consequence of interventions by humans. They typically approach matters from lofty conceptual altitudes. Generally, the plot thickened. Gradually, the plot thickened, and the human added component, the artificial, became inseparable from the natural or the human free earth. The naturalists could not ignore the remains of the Titanic at the bottom of the sea that has become a habitat for all kinds of critters. Not many folks are called naturalists these days nor are any folks called artificialists. Let's just call everything natural, including designing. The hubris of humans is to think that we can stack layer upon layer of intention, of design, and ultimately save ourselves. Of course, the hubris is natural too. This issue, it's titled The Time of Your Life. It's a fully operational wheelchair, <clears throat> kind of Ferris wheel thingy. Imagine if you could, by choice, extend the life distance between the baby stroller and the wheelchair. Not too far-fetched to imagine. More daunting, however, will be selecting the age at which you can decide to hang out for a duration. For example, stopping at the age of 25 for a decade or so. Consider that for some future design issues to be in denial about. Isn't everyone a designer who is not a designer? Maybe since we only refer to certain folks as designers, we should call the others accidenters. <laughs> when asked if they are accidenters or designers, these folks could simply say, no, we're accidenters. Since most educated folks on the planet are, called, are not called designers, does this mean that most educational programs at all levels are really programs about accidentalism? Perhaps the academic high priests of the field, the accidentalists, have already developed journals, societies, conferences, awards, named chairs, promotion, and tenure criteria. Perhaps there's a parallel event like the one today called the future of accidentalism. Seriously, folks, how about designing some radical new educational programs for K through PhD? I urge all of us to take this on as a design problem. Think about why a meeting like the one today entitled The Future of Education would not draw an audience. Parents, administrators, and employers feel more comfortable in conversation about, conversations about design than about art. Design implies safe. Art, not so much. Design implies useful. Art, useful only if everything else is taken care of. Design points to the future. Art tends to focus on the now. Design is a verb, a noun, and more. Art is only a noun, becoming the awkward art making in order to activate. In the A to B scheme, aiming at B while standing at A holds value for design. Allowing B to emerge is valued for art. 
Practitioners are wont to identify themselves as belonging to this camp or that camp. Those who call themselves designers seem more intent on this. In my school, we peddled the term artist designer, but could use a new shorter word. Happily for me, the term decorator is becoming history. Next in my crosshairs is abolishing the arcane term fine art. So what is the impact of the passage of time on working on something? Things are clearer with less time. Here's proof. With a rubber stamp of the word time, a pad of ink, sheets of paper, and increasing amounts of time, here's what happens. Stamping for one minute produces the following. Stamping for two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, and finally 10 minutes. Comparing the results of one minute and 10 minutes, obviously the, re the relationship among the parts is clearer with less time. I'm honored to be here and I thank you for your time.